was ready to take his position and to move and to do what God wants him to do, first thing I want us to realize is after the death of your Moses, God speaks. And really, if you look in that first verse, what did it say? It said, after, now after the death of Moses, then it said, the Lord spake unto Joshua. It is oftentimes that we're listening or looking for God to speak in our situation, and he's quiet because we're not in the right place yet. We're still over here trying to, you know, do CPR on what should be dead. We're trying to revive something, you know. We're trying to blow life back into it. And God is over here saying, I, I need you to step over. I need you to move from that place to here so that now you can be at the place where you can hear me. And so we can't get so weighed down with what used to be that we don't realize God has not stopped his plan and his destiny on your life. Hallelujah. Amen. And so often we get stuck. I know, I'm going to raise my own hand. We get stuck like, oh, with this, aren't I supposed to be associated with this person? Aren't I supposed to be associated with this group? Aren't I supposed to be doing this and that? And God is saying, nope, it's dead for a reason. Come over here because now I have the destiny that I want you to walk in. And so often we get just, like I said, we get stuck in what God used to be doing. We get stuck with, well, you know, God moved in, you know, this in 1922, and, you know, all these people got healed and saved, and, and then, you know, people looking at going, he, what, he died or something? Is he still, is he not longer moving? But God is the God of what he is doing right now, and sometimes we have to make sure we don't get caught in our old Moses relationships and forget that God's saying, I want you to go forward into a land that I want you to possess. And so God doesn't want us to stay stuck and what was because he knows if we spend too much time that morning over our lost Moseses, we will become rejected, depressed, and hopeless. Instead, he is telling us to focus on what he's doing so that we can move forward. Amen. And see, it is so important for us to understand that God still has planned for you. And so just as he was with Moses... He will be with you. And that's a promise that we have from God. And sometimes that's part of the reason why we don't want to let go of our Moses because we think we're going to be by ourselves. We think that nobody will walk with us. Nobody encourage us. Nobody will pray for us. Nobody will help us. But God said, I'm with you. You don't need the Moses that, that was pulling you up all of the time out of the waters that you thought was on the floor. Why? Because I'm the one that can steal the waters. I'm the Amen. one that can roll back the waters. I'm the one that can part the waters. I'm the God of your salvation, and I can keep you in perfect peace if your mind is stayed on me. So it really don't matter who, what, when, or where that you were dealing with, but if you trust in me, I am the one that can take care of you. So do not worry. If I was with Moses, when I, if I was with you and you saw Moses in, you know, me with Moses in those situations, that was just God preparing you to understand that just like he was with Moses, he can be with you. Amen. If you saw him with your, your pastor, guess what? He can be with you. If you saw him with your friend, he can be with you. Mm -hmm. What you saw him do for somebody else, you're not eliminated and you're not out. You can have the same thing. So you can know that just as God was with Moses, he will be with you. So that you can go in and do everything that God has for you. Hallelujah. Amen. And then the word will take you forward. Joshua was reminded by God to continue to carry the word. He told him, don't look to the left, don't look to the right, don't, don't get bogged down in, in what people say and think. Because, you know, I have this thing of people have what I call the belief of I've, what I've seen. That's their doctrine. It's only what I've seen. So God can't do more than what they've seen. If I've only seen God in this little way, then you can't come tell me God can do better than that. Well, can I tell you something? Moses wasn't going to see what Joshua was going to see. Because Moses was dead. And sometimes we're so busy worried about what the dead relationships in our lives are trying to tell us about where God has taken us, but we got to stop and say, wait a minute. If God wanted them to be with us, he would have sent them with us. Sometimes we got to understand there's a separation for a reason because they're not going to be ready for the season in your life and the direction God has for you. Because I remember one time I had a person tell me, my, my daughter, we were out, and she told me she saw a beat. And it was like this time of the year. And this individual was like, you didn't see no bees because bees don't come out. And I've never seen no bees at this time of the year, so you wrong. But you know what I really appreciated with my daughter? She said, okay, respectful because it was an adult. She went and did her own research. And she went and researched on bees, and she found out that bees do come out. And they potentially will come out this time. And they're, I don't remember all the terminology, but they're like scouters. So they were scouting to see if there were some early blooms. 
And so why did I tell you that story? Too many of us just take somebody to tell you God ain't healing no more. God ain't delivering no more. There are no more apostles. There are no more prophets. That we don't need this. We don't need that. We have cut the Bible up into such a jigsaw puzzle about what God ain't doing. And we just go, oh, okay. But I like that spirit that says, okay, I heard you. I'm going to be respectful, but I'm going to do the research myself. I'm going to read the word for what the word says. And, when, and I'm going to ask the spirit, what are you doing? And based on what the spirit is telling me, that's how I'm going to move. That's how I'm going to trust. And so I just want to encourage us today. Let us not let people with the only what I've seen doctrine try to convince us that God is not doing things. Because that's that will keep you from going in and possessing the land God has for you. Because see, Joshua had to have faith that if God told him I was going in and putting some people out of a territory, that's what I was going to do for you. That's what I'm going to do. Amen. Somebody else might not have seen that in their life. So they're going to say, well, God ain't going to give you that. Somebody already did it. Mm -hmm. The Hittites are there. All of the Ites are there. Why are you going over there? It's no different than what people told us. Why are you going on the south side? Why are you over here? Going in the exchange area. It's this, I don't know what the, the area they call this, but it's called this. I said, I'm renaming this area the Bethel of the Lord. Why can't the Spirit of God dwell in this place? Amen. It don't matter that we little when we started, but you got to start somewhere. Amen. You got to start somewhere. When you start, you start and trust what God says. Because if he sends you, he said, I will not leave you nor forsake you. You are Amen. not going by yourself. We are not alone. We're not alone. Amen. Whether it's whatever situation we face, we are not alone. Mm. And what I appreciate was God kept telling Joshua to be encouraged. He kept telling him, you know, be of good courage. He was telling him to, you know, be strong. And, 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 and so it wasn't a suggestion. It was a mandate. It was a mandate so that he could get moving. And God spoke it again and again and again. And he kept telling him to do what he was telling him to do. And one of the things when you think about the word strong, and when I looked that up, what was interesting to me was not only do you move without fear, but there is this combative strength. It's this combative strength that goes along with being strong. How else do you think you're going to go in? How else is Joshua going to go in and take over territories if he didn't have a combative strength that God wanted him to go? Because we often think that when God says, you know, be strong and good courage, that's kind of warm and fuzzy. Oh, God wants to be a good courage like we just get to sit down. No, that's not what he was telling him. He was saying be courageous, be without fear, Amen. walk in power. I want you to have the understanding of who you are in me. Because when you walk in my power, guess what? You're going to have to face some stuff. So I'm going to send you into a land with some people. Guess what? These Hittites and these people that were living in the land, he didn't, Joshua couldn't go up to them and say, God gave me your land, now move. And they was going to say, oh, okay, let me pack my stuff so I can leave. I don't think so. They was like, they might have been like, who are you? We're not going nowhere. So he had to have this combative strength to come in and take it by force. He had to come in and take it. He had to take it, but he took it with the strength of God. And I just want us to encourage us today that that's when, 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 when God was speaking to Joshua, the same thing he's speaking to us. He's telling us to be strong. He's telling us to be courageous. He's letting us know that we're going to have to be combative. We're going to be willing to fight some fights to take over this territory. Amen. This area that we say we want, it's not going to happen just because we wish it. It's not going to happen because we just hope for it. We can sit in here and sit in here and sit in here and we can get old and dry and dusty and die and we still would not have made a change until we can put on the courage and the strength the way God wants us to do and go out and take it. Amen. That's what happens and that's the problem too many times in our church. We get comfortable sitting. I'm not saying we don't come together, but we come together to get strengthened, encouraged, taught, so we can go out on those streets and go get some people. Amen. Go snatch them out of the devil's hand. Because the devil ain't going to just offer them up to you because you're so cute, so I'm going to just give them <laughs> to you. He is not doing that. In fact, when he senses that there's an anointing on your life, when he senses there's a purpose, he's going to raise up the fire on you because he wants you to think you are by yourself. He wants you to think you have no strength. He wants you to think that you can't do anything. And guess what? Many of us sit down and agree and go into agreement with him instead of doing what God said do. It was not a suggestion to be strong and courageous. It was a mandate. It was a mandate from him because he knew that if we did not stand and be in a place of saying, I'm not going to move, I'm not going to back down, I'm not going to give up. If we didn't get into that 
place, we could find ourselves back at that. See, we wouldn't be standing in this place. Hallelujah. We wouldn't be standing in this place if I had made up my mind a year ago that I was going to go through all the hell that I went to to get here. All of the lies that were said about me. All the things that was came against me. If I had not said I'm not going to be moved, all the ites and the its and everything else that came against me. If I had said I'm not going to move, guess what? This would not have happened. This would not have come together. And we'd all gone back to our own places. And guess what? You might have went to your old places and been okay, but I don't think God just wants us to be okay. God don't want us to just survive. He didn't come. Jesus did not give us this full salvation that we talked about in Sunday school. He didn't come to give us salvation, equipping, gifting, power, strength, ability. He didn't come to give us all of that so we could just function through life. Amen. So that, ooh, I'm just barely getting through. Praise God. Is that your testimony? Do you want that to be your testimony? Oh, praise God. I'm just barely getting back. I'm just scraping through drag. I'm just dragging myself. That ain't my testimony. I'm going to say, Lord, I am strong and mighty, and I'm going on to get everything that you have for me. Hallelujah. Amen. And God is telling us, he said, it's time to move. It's time to move. You know, one of the things that I appreciate in the scripture is this. God has given Joshua all of this encouragement. He's telling him to be strong. But if you look in that verse 2, it says, For unto these people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land. Guess what? This move wasn't just for Joshua. Joshua wasn't the only one that was going to go in and possess. Amen. Every person was going to get a land. Can I tell you, I speak this prophetically, it is not just because your pastors are going to go in and, and refill this church. Are you are. Because God is going to give you a land. He's going to give you a territory. He's going to equip you. So you we going to all battle together. But each one of you have an assigned place that God has for you. So that you can go in and snatch everybody out that need to be snatched out. And so that you can walk in your gifts so we'll no longer be afraid of being the evangelist. We'll no longer be afraid of being the teacher. We'll no longer be afraid of being the prophet or the apostle. Whatever the gifting is that's in you, we won't be afraid of it. it. You know, it don't matter. You don't think you can sing, worship anyway. God didn't say I called the singers. He said he called the worshipers. So whatever it is, you come and give all of who you are to God so that he can do what he want to do in the midst of us. Amen. And all of us then go in and have a peace and take a part of the property. All of us get to divide in the inheritance. See, I, I, what I'm so grateful for is, see, we don't have to fight. So this ain't me trying to stand on the hill. It's not Pastor James trying to stand on the hill and say, okay, we the mighty ones. No, we equal standing, equal standing. We just might be the pastors, but we equal standing in this regard. We all are going in and getting a, an inheritance. Amen. We all are going in and getting a territory. We all are going in and God's got purpose for us. And, and guess what? Too many times we wait and we want people to come in all cleaned up and ready and nice. No, I don't care if they stink. I don't care if they got alcohol on their breath. I don't care if they can't barely stand up. God still cares about that person and he wants that person to have an inheritance too. And so we're going to make it up our mind as a church. We're not going to look down on us on nobody and we ain't going to say, well, wait a minute, you're a little smelly so we're going to have you stand in the hallway. You come and take a seat of honor because God gave us all a seat of honor. Amen. And maybe we didn't smell physically, but our sin stunk in his nostril nonetheless. And so we're going to be a church that's making up our mind that we're going to do some things God's way. We're going to move. And I just want to tell us today that it's time to move. Amen. It's time for us to do the things God has told us to do. Yes, we, we spent that year of coming together and worshiping in our house. We couldn't invite nobody because barely us could fit in there. But now that the Lord then gave us more space, he's going to fill it up. And you know how he's going to fill it up? With each of us. When we get out and do what God has called us to Amen. do. And his promise to Joshua was, was some several things. He told him, don't let the word depart out of your mouth. Meditate on it day and night. Observe it. Guess what's going to happen when you do that? Your way is going to be made prosperous and you're going to have success. That's not just, that's, that's both spiritual prosperity, but I also believe financial prosperity. There's no way that you can use the, the tools of God, the wisdom of God, and not see that affect all areas of your life. All areas of your life. You know, many of us are broke and 
you know, don't got no money. I'm like, Lord Jesus, I'm so broke. I can't. I'm just tired of being broke. But when you start using God's wisdom, when you start giving away what he tells you to give away, when you start doing what he tells you to do, when you start being what he tells you to be, there's no way you can't be successful and prosperous in all your ways. I didn't make it up. That's what he said. He said, so don't let the words depart from your mouth. That even means declaring the truth over yourself. Amen. God was declaring the truth over Joshua when he was telling them, I told you to be strong. I told you to be courageous. God will speak the same thing over your life. We got to get to that place. We say, Lord, I will do and be all that you've called me to do. And so I just want to encourage us today Amen. that we want to be everything God has called us to be. Amen. He's told us to move. He told us it's time to... Pack your bags from your old place. You know, in fact, leave your bags from your old place. Don't even pack all that stuff. Leave it. <laughs> Most of the stuff you don't want. Because if you try to bring it to a new location, it ain't just going to fit right. You know, if you ever bought a house and you got in your new house and the old furniture just didn't even look right. It just it just didn't have it right. It just didn't fit. Sometimes you got to leave all that stuff behind. So, just, so, so scratch what I said. Leave all your baggage behind. Just take you and your family and those you love and move forward into what God has for you so that you can be what he's called you to be. Because I believe, and I just speak that over each one of us, not just for the church, but I speak over that 